Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Songus Center here at University of Massachusetts Lowell for tonight's Division II North MIAA Boys Basketball Final featuring the Beverly Panthers and your Belmont Marauders. I'm Coach Jan Kuman, joined in the booth tonight by the eloquent, loquacious, and knowledgeable Todd Bloniards. Todd, a little uh, adjustment for us here, but it's great to have you on the yes, broadcast. Yes, yeah, not being in control of you is uh, it's kind of a <laughs> big charring of a position for me, and I will try to do my best filling in for Coach Strait here uh, on the, uh, the color. But, uh, yeah, it's been a, a heck of a run for the Marauders boys basketball team so far. Three big wins uh, to get it uh, kicked off, uh, defeating uh, Redding, Bill Ricca, and Latin Academy in a, the, the toughest contest to date. And here we are now. This is Beverly, the top seed in the D1 North region. So, uh, you know, one versus three should be a great matchup with a trip to TD Garden on the line. Going to the Garden is what's at stake tonight as Logan squares for the tip against Jack Crowley, senior forward for Beverly. Beverly will control. Belmont takes it right back. Minikazi to Annis and now Naruzi. Naruzi settling just across the half line. PJS circles around and he'll take it from Ali. Over to Logan. Little pop step, thinks about the three. Work inside to Minicozzi on the block. Swallowed by three Panthers, but he's going to get called for the travel. Yeah, it's a tough call early on here. He got swallowed up inside on the triple team. Probably, you know, he was going to have a tough shot regardless. Might have been better to look to dish there. Great fundamental basketball player is Minikazi. We'll sure he, we are sure he will bounce back as Annis defending. And now Naruzi as he defends De La Cruz. Boris as the Beverly football chance starts. And that's Jack Crowley putting it in for the first points of the night. Here's Naruzi. Scoops it off to Logan. Logan to Minikazi. Minikazi to Naruzi. Motion offense working up top. Screen sets as Mack tries to slip clear. He has the ball. Beverly doing a great job staying on their man in a man-to-man -man defensive set. Here's Naruzi. Annis, captain, leader, Minikazi. Nice nifty little spin move there. Tries to find Annis in the corner, but can't. Beverly up with it. Damian Boris pushing. Loses the handle, goes back Belmont way. Well, you were talking with me before the game queue about the fact that, you know, Belmont's the team, and one of the keys to their success uh, through this run has been, uh, you know, their transition offense and, you know, the, just the overall speed pushing it up the floor. You saw Beverly there in transition didn't work out quite as well for them in the early going. Belmont's certainly a team, Todd, that likes to run. They met their running match last week against Latin Academy. So this might be a little bit of a slower pace change for the Marauders versus what they saw last week at Wakefield High School against the Latin Academy Dragons. Still 2-0 here inside of 6 minutes and 30 seconds in the first as Annis takes a drive, then pops back out. Logan with a good look at the three, passes it up, has it knocked away, active hands there by Dela Cruz, balls on the two floor. To shoot. And yeah, Belmont unable to get the shot up in time, violation. Yeah, good swarming defense there by Beverly. In fact, their def Beverly's defense here in the early going has looked pretty impressive to me. Uh, they, yeah. they seem to be swarming on the ball handler. Belmont has had about four possessions here, unable to put the ball in the basket, which of course is the goal of this game. Last time I checked. Last time we checked. I'm no expert. That was Boris on the drive. Four nothing Beverly. Here's Minikazi. Naruzi holds. Student sections going back and forth. Caddy corner across the court. Beverly has the numbers. And they answer with the classic sit down, shut up. Mac Annis with the take is going to get fouled down low on his way to the basket. That's number 40, Austin A, or they're going to get for the first foul of the game. Let me ask you this, Coach. Uh, one of the things, uh, you know, since I haven't uh, seen the team here through this run, I noticed the way Beverly's playing. They're kind of bringing Belmont way out. Has Coach Pritchard tried to work any kind of like backdoor cutter sort of plays or anything? Where yeah. I would think he'd have a good chance to be able to create some uh, offense that way. Yeah, I think that... that, that uh, Usually what they've been doing is trying to kind of get their slip screen up top and see if that's working out for them and try to get that kind of run and gun and quick three shot. And then if that's not, 
Coach Pritch has been really good at kind of activating those backdoor cuts, and this is a really good passing team. So there's no doubt that you're going to see a couple of dimes drop by PJS and Minakazi on a backdoor cut. And speaking of nice passing, that's yeah. Beverly coming down the floor. Jack Crowley finishing it off. 6-2 to two to score, Beverly with a four-point lead. Crowley, one of the, the, the Panthers' senior stars, and he's been off to a good start of this one. Mac Annis uses the Logan screen, but reverses the other way. Takes contact, no call. Beverly up with it, and they're going to get Logan, I believe, on the foul. Could be Minakazi reaching in, possibly, too. I don't Looks know like it. Yep. Good, good eyes there, Todd. Start this game off. As they're going to get number 25, Tim Minikazi. First call. First foul for him. First team foul for Belmont. Here's Duncan Moreland. Up to half court. That's Justin De La Cruz. Strong take inside by number 10, Crowley. Gets his own rebound and finishes it off. He's got six of their eight points uh, here to start the ball game. Belmont not answering with as much speed as they have been, and Beverly doing a great job of getting back. They're set by the time Belmont gets across half court. A little bit of a longer floor than the Marauders are used to, of course, here at the Songa Center. Minikazi with a nifty spin, just rolls off the front lip, no good, but a great take by Tim. Middlesex League All-Star is Minikazi. Almost a travel there. Boris can't handle it, but saves it just shy of the baseline. Dela Cruz now slows things down. Minakazi on him to Boris. Boris looking inside. Nothing in the gray area as Beverly screens and motions to space. Foul's going to be called on the floor. A Naruzzi, no, I think. Naruzzi. Looks like they're going to get Ali Naruzzi. And we're going to see the first action of the night for Avery Arno as he takes out Kevin Logan. And for the Panthers, number 23, Gabe Copeland will pull out number 40, Austin Ayer. The former uh, Marauder uh, starting quarterback for uh, your uh, football team there. Not that I'm, you know, biased or have a special no. spot in my heart. Not at all. Avery has, has played a fantastic role, actually. As um, sixth man? As, as the sixth man uh, for this Belmont Marauder team. And, and it's really cool for me to see from a coaching perspective a kid who's such a, a star and, a, and kind of a marquee player for, for us play the role that he's playing. Perhaps you could say he's quarterbacking the second unit. <laughs> the puns begin already. I love it. That was Jack Crowley on the basket for, for Beverly stretching their lead to eight. And here's Arno, looks inside to PJS, just shy of the free throw line, takes it to the rack, nice left off the glass, two points. That was a nice move, good penetration there by uh, Preston Jackson Stevens. Rodgers are gonna have to do, start double teaming on Crowley here because he's just getting too many good looks. Looks like it, he's got a lot of open looks to the basket thus far. Here's Boris, inside to Moreland. Nice easy runner just inside the stripe for him. Lead stays at eight for the Panthers as Maruzzi comes back. Over to Arno, into the corner to Mack as he comes back around towards the top. Thinks about the shot, thinks the better of it. Little give and go, Mack can't finish. Beverly's up with it, it's Copeland. Copeland only a freshman, first off the bench. As the shot from Boris from the corner is good, and that expands it to 15-4, and Coach Pritchard's seen enough, he's gonna call a timeout. I don't getting, a look, yeah. getting a look at why Beverly's the one seed. Todd, your thoughts on the early Yeah, well, uh, one of the things I was about to say is before that three-point attempt, I think that was the first three-point attempt taken by either team. Talk about old-school basketball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, both teams have been trying to work the ball inside. Beverly certainly had a little bit more success at it. They seem to be moving a little bit quicker. Marauders, like you say, for all that speed they have, they, it's almost like they're slowing it down, which would be counteractive to yeah. what the way they kind of been successful all year. And rare for them. But one thing that I will say about this Marauders team, especially having seen them throughout their, their tournament run, is that this is not a team that is concerned at this moment, right? And I've seen this, and, and, and we saw them last, last week against Latin Academy. Latin Academy posted up about probably a 11 or 12 point lead all in the second quarter, you know, before this Belmont team kind of woke up. This is a team that can score in flashes. It can score in bunches. And all of a sudden, you'll blink. Three minutes will go by, and they'll go on a 15-3 to run, and the scoreboard will flip. So we're going to see if, if they're able to do that against this Beverly team, who, of course, is the one seed in the North, 18-2 and record, had good wins of their own, beat Burlington in OT, 
right? Beat Winchester, was a talented Winchester basketball team this year, and beat Woburn in the first round. Well, and that's the one advantage, though, uh, Beverly had. Because this was a 15-team field, Beverly was the one team since they were the one seed. They're the only team that got a first-round bye. Yep. So they've only had to play two tournament two games tournament up to games. this point, as opposed to three for the now, Marauders. Now, the million-dollar question is whether that helps you or hurts you. They seem to not have any problem getting in their rhythm tonight as they're enjoying a 15-4 lead with three minutes to go in the first. They're going to get Moreland on an off-ball foul, I believe. Excuse me, they're going to get Damian Boris on the off-ball foul. And Chapazian checked into the game, senior captain for the Marauders, will inbound. Good time to get your, one of your senior captains in there. Chapazian is also like Arno. If I had to give a six-man award, it would go to either of them. Chapazian gives it up. Moreland with the nice steal. He's got numbers. Kicks it over to Dela Cruz, and that's oh, nice knocked away by Arno. And that's something that he's done quite a bit of for this Belmont team thus far in this tournament run. Come off the bench with defense. Yeah, that's something necessarily he's not necessarily used to from his fall sports season, but yeah, he's doing a great job uh, on that block, the layup. Inbound from Dela Cruz to Moreland. He has it knocked away. No call for a travel is Duncan Moreland. Going to UNH next year as the senior to play safety for the Wildcats football team. Mac Annis now for Belmont. He is a special player. Off to Minikazi, circles around to PJS. PJS with a nice fake, great passing down low as yes. Arnold finishes. That was some great passing, like you said, to Coach, right there. Uh, you know, Annis get, finding uh, Avery underneath for oh, a nice easy one. And of course, did Avery call glass? He went very high he on called, the glass. He called oh, glass. Did he call high glass? He though? called high glass. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Here's <laughs> Boris slowing it down. Over to Dela Cruz. Dela Cruz back to Boris. Crowley now, he's been the guy thus far for Beverly, and the nice left-handed layup is good as he takes Minikazi to the rack. PJS now with a little speed. Right in on Duncan Moreland, who offers little resistance, so PJS answers right back. And there's the speed we've been talking about and waiting for uh, from the Marauders here today. Deceptively fast is the junior forward, Preston Jackson-Stevens. Here's Boris now. Arno guarding Copeland. The freshman fade away is no good. Knocked away, fought by Shapazian, but the referee is going to say by a Beverly Panther, and it's Belmont ball. And it looks like uh, we've got uh, Joseph, Joseph Carey checking into the game for the Marauders. No relation to Harry Carey, Todd. Really? No relation. Hi. Hi. <laughs> what if the moon was made of green cheese? <laughs> Preston Jackson Stevens dribbles through the legs, pulls it back to Shapazian, who dribbles it off his foot mm -hmm. and out of bounds. Not the intended path for the basketball there. No, but at least on the last couple of times down the floor, uh, we've seen the Marauders more into the flow of their offense, and I think they needed that. I know you said it's it's early and the Marauders aren't phased by being down 11 points in the first quarter, but still, you got to do something to kind of stop the bleeding a little bit and you know, kind of get something resembling your kind of offense. You need a little mojo in this game. Copeland gets a little tied up, manages to get the ball back. 34 is Nick Bragg Braganka. Good defense from the Marauders here. Trap play has been a stalwart of their defensive set. Able to escape it as Boris kicks it to Moreland and he converts. Now the Marauders did everything right defensively there and they had a kind of a, what looked like a low percentage shot, but they made it. Moreland, of course, a great athlete. Here's Annis, Shapazian now. PJS thinks about the deep three, head fakes, then takes it inside with the left. They're gonna wave the shot off and call foul on the floor. Now for the Marauders, who you said their success this season's been built a, a, quite a bit on the three-pointer. We still haven't seen them attempt a three-point shot, I don't think, here in this first quarter. One of the things that's, that's interesting about this team, Todd, too, is that you, you start to think that they're a real three-point kind of centric offense. But we've seen a couple of games for them. Um, the Bill Ricca game is one that jumps to mind, where the three just wasn't falling the way that it needed to fall. And the, the, the quick adjustment. Same deal against Latin Academy. The quick adjustment by this Belmont team to recognize that aspect is not working and to go in a different direction. By the um, way, Coach Broders just made a substitution, a doubling up substitution with Logan in for Arno. They did. Check the jerseys. Big fellow back in. Giveaway down low by the Marauders. Brag Anka up with it. He'll slow it down and hand it off to Dela Cruz. Dela Cruz, Preston Jackson, Stevens on him. 
throws the ball away. A little bit of a cross up there as head coach Matt Karakudis implores his team to be smarter with the basketball. 15 seconds, shot clock's up. Norizi jogs across half court, 19-8. This will be the last shot of the first quarter here as Naruzi kicks it to Carey. Carey pulls it back. Naruzi now, hard drive, switches to the right, can't get the soft touch. Logan up with it. Irishman tries to put it back and falls just short. So a first quarter that was dominated by Beverly. 19-8 to the score here. Belmont trailing by 11 points. Definitely the largest deficit they've seen at the end of the first quarter for the entirety of their tournament run thus far. Is Todd, it the largest deficit they've seen the entire tournament? No, though, they, were, okay. they were down upwards of 12 against Latin Academy um, in the last round. But what is it that you see this Belmont team is having to do to get back into this basketball game? Well, I think you start to see a little bit at the end of the first quarter there, coaches. That I, I just think they need to... You know, it's great that they're not having to rely on the three-point shot. I think a little bit more movement on the offensive end, maybe just a matter of picking up the tempo a little bit, too. You know, when they were really plodding along in the early stages of this game is when they, they fell behind. I mean, the last couple minutes of that first quarter, they basically both teams play pretty even. Belmont having to adjust a little bit as its traditional run and gun is meeting a little bit of resistance here. Beverly's done a great job of getting back to set. And one of the things that Coach Streit and I talked a lot about in the first three rounds is this notion that as soon as the ball hits the bottom of the basket, Belmont's back in the other direction. And I'm not seeing as much of that. Yeah. That much of that sense of urgency to outlet the ball after a basket and get up the floor. And they really wore teams down in the first three rounds. By the time they got to the third quarter, teams were just exhausted. Yeah. Well, I mean, the one thing you can say here, I mean, Coach Adam Pritchard, he's been around this Belmont team for a yes. very long time. He's seen a lot of situations, like you mentioned earlier, Rodders not phased being down double digits after a quarter, and Coach Pritchard certainly not, uh, you know, phased by that either. And, you know, he, he's seen what Beverly can do well, and he's going to make the necessary adjustments here, I believe. Naruzi handling for Belmont. Naruzi, Carey, PJS, Anison, Logan on the floor as Annis takes the shot from the elbow. No good. Logan up with it, scoots it over to Naruzi. Thinks about a baseline take, then thinks the better of it. PJS now. Belmont resets its offense with 20 still on the shot clock, plenty of time. Coach Pritchard is a little bit frustrated with the execution of his offense out there. Close to a travel by Naruzi, but no call. Good ball Annis. movement though here to PJS, drops the dime, but Presto can't finish, just yeah. misses. Everything went right except the shot. <laughs> Nine the times shot. out of 10, he makes that. Good defense by Annis, denies the shot, and Belmont tries to run here, three on two. Annis for three, no good. Usually that's automatic. Beverly on the rebound, that's number 40, Austin oh, Ayers. Nice save. Naruzzi still. And they're gonna send it back the other uh, way. Yeah, apparently his foot might have just been dragging the line there, or towing the line. Uh, whichever classic 70s song you want to go with there. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Naruz has been a special player on the defensive side of the ball, especially for the Marauders here. He's been a great point guard for them, but active hands, always active hands. Mm. Annis guarding Boris. Boris, senior guard. He'll scoot it over to Copeland. Copeland to Crowley. Crowley looks inside. Moreland's going to get fouled. Foul's going to be on the floor by number four. Preston Jackson Stevens. I mean, both these teams have so much senior experience. In the case of Beverly, all four of their seniors are in the starting five for them. And play a lot of minutes. Nice inbound there from Copeland to Moreland, but Moreland can't finish. Ball gets tipped around. It's Kevin Logan who comes up with it. He'll press it himself. Minikazi, the dirt dog, loses the handle, gives it back to Logan. Nice take by Logan, dishes it to Naruzzi. Looking inside to flashing Annis, but nothing there. PJS instead, who dips it off to Naruzzi, who can't finish. Ball is up, it's anybody's ball. Hungry, hungry hippos out there, and the ball's gonna get called on the floor. Yeah, it's on the Marauders. Uh... Looks like they're gonna get Mac Annis on that one. Correction, yep. That'll be Mac's first foul. Unable to get rolling thus far in the second quarter are the Marauders. Two good looks, just unable to put the ball in the hoop. Only three uh, team fouls, though, on the Marauders of this first half. 
Four or right four? I'm looking at the wrong score. I know, it's confusing. It's a home guest. <laughs> yeah, for the kids. Moreland inside to Crowley. Nice pass. Good back check defense by Naruzzi, but great, great job by Jack Crowley there. Crowley lost Logan there. I think that's going to be a, a pivotal matchup because Crowley has, has certainly been a strong offensive force for this Beverly team. 13 points to differential here as we're inside six minutes remaining in the first half. Mac Annis for three, it's short. Kevin Logan tips it over to Naruzzi. Minicozzi catch and shoot, that's good. And if this team starts getting their shot hot, watch out. Particularly from long distance where they haven't made one yet. Boris jogs across half court. Mac Annis on him. Crowley now over to Ayer. Ayer looks inside to Moreland and he'll be fouled over the back by Kevin Logan. Fifth foul of the half for the Marauders. And we will see. Number 11, De La Cruz, check back into the game as the freshman Copeland sits. I got to tell you, that's a big freshman, number 23. Yeah, they don't uh, list heights on our uh, roster here, but uh, yeah, he's, a, he's about 6'2". I'm sure he hasn't finished filling out yet. Foul's going to get called again on Logan, I believe, on the inbounds pass there. It sure is. We're working it into Crowley again. Two quick fouls for Kevin Logan there. Yeah, and part of that is, uh, you know, Crowley's got a, a little, looks like a little bit of a quickness advantage there on uh, Logan. They go into him again. Nice spin move there by Jack Crowley. It's a senior on sophomore matchup down there on the block. Yep. Kevin, a great heady ball player, but still just a sophomore. Cracked the starting lineup about two thirds of the way through the season for the Marauders. I was thinking of calling him the human squeegee because early on he was cleaning the glass quite uh, well there. A couple of offensive rebounds. Fade away was... shot by the squeege. Okay. <laughs> 23 to 12. <laughs> oh, something might, this one might stick. Oh, huh? no, nah, that was a good one. <laughs> I call him the Irishman. Scorsese nod. Okay. Moreland. Haven't seen that one yet. Shot from Moreland is an air ball. Picked up by Preston Jackson. Stevens and Belmont's looking to run. Over to Naruzzi. Little reverse Whoa. underhanded layup by wow. Ali. And that's going to prompt the first time out for Matt Karakutis of the Beverly Panthers. So 23-14. Belmont let it expand upwards of 12. They've yeah. reduced it back to 9. Right. Can Belmont bring this to even going into the end of the half? I don't, I don't know if they can get it to even, but they can certainly chop a few more points off this lead, uh, perhaps if they can get their uh, three-point shot to, to materialize here. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just impressed by these layups where you throw the ball way up high off the glass and it comes back down and in. I mean, those are, you know, you talk about your geometry and your angles. I mean, that's, you know, we're not talking isosceles here. No, I mean, we're talking, no. We're talking a high archer. No, we're getting, you know, we're getting like, trapezoidal. We're getting parabolic. I mean, literally, we're talking about a high degree of difficulty. You know, if you want a pun there. Yeah, I see, I see what you did there. Yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. He who would you pun. You picked up my sign? He, oh, goodness gracious. He who would pun would pick a pocket. Sorry to say. go off on this tangent, fans. Oh, but, my um, God. Just, Three uh, of them in a row. I'm having flashbacks <laughs> to trigonometry. I'm not a happy man right now. <laughs> Actually, I like trig. I wrote, I, always did. I wrote a geometry book once. I, when I was in, when I was, took my tenth grade geometry class, I did a little like book of. I make no secret of it. I'm a big fat nerd. I love all all things nerdy. What? It, well, here you go. What did the acorn say when he grew up? What, Todd? Gee, I'm a train. <laughs> and that's it. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> that's the end of our broadcast tonight. His name's Todd Blodiars. I'm Jan Cuban. Don't forget to tip your waitress. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here all week, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I think. No, I'm actually just here today. Don't let anybody say we don't have any fun. That's Jack Crowley for three. He's it's having good. fun. He's uh, having fun. Jack Crowley's having fun. At the expense of the Marauders here, unfortunately, in the early going. 26-14 as we close inside of the second half of the second quarter. 4-15 on the clock. Naruzzi loses the handle, gets it back. PJS with a head fake, looks inside, has it knocked away. Belmont being a little sloppy with the basketball here. More, Moreland, excuse me. Lays the shoulder into Naruzzi and draws the contact. He'll be going to the strike. We're going to get Ali on that one, and that's his second. Well, again, when it comes to the speed of the transition offense, Beverly's had it so far in this game. They've had a distinct advantage in that part of the, uh, the game. And Belmont is just giving the ball back to Beverly, either not finishing, looks around the basket, or on that last possession, Good look inside, got body position, just unable to secure the rock. And the worst part here with 4.02 to go in the half, uh, Coach, is that, you know, right now uh, Beverly in the bonus here, yeah. and they're, uh, you know, so every Belmont foul is going to send them to the line for 
for two as it turns well, out. Well, going to be a one and one until they hit ten, and then it's the double bonus. Yeah, but didn't Moreland. he miss the first one? Or I don't believe so, oh. but that was a shooting foul. Oh, right, they okay, right, right, right. Foul. gotcha, sorry. Okay. Here's PJS. It's okay, you're a hockey guy. You're a hockey guy, John. <laughs> Here's Preston Jackson-Stevens, <laughs> Neruzzi, Minikazi, runner from the elbow, no good. Ball swatted around. Great job there by Crowley. Sends it off of Mac Annis to give it back to the Beverly Panthers. Far and away, up. Yeah, far and away, Jack Crowley, the senior, has been the star of this game. And now on both ends of the floor. I mean, he's been a tremendous offensive weapon for them. Uh, down low, even from mid-range. And, you know, again, just some great hustle there that you'd expect. I imagine he's one of their senior captains I would, as well. I would imagine certainly so. Certainly playing like one so far. Belmont getting aggressive at the half-court trap there, but they're unable to come away with the ball. Copeland with a nice head fake. Puts up the three. It's good. That's Gabe Copeland, the freshman, who got Annis yeah, off his feet. I think Coach Pri oh, oh, I thought he was going to call a timeout. And they just called a double dribble on yeah. Mac Annis. Yeah, I'm like, this, is, this is a dangerous time here with three and a half minutes to go. You don't want to become totally unglued and let this thing get out of hand. It is, 16, down 16 points. 16 you points. You said the spread. biggest deficit the Marauders have faced all postseason. This is now the biggest deficit the Marauders have faced. And if they want to advance to the Garden, they're going to have to pick up their game because this Beverly Panthers team came to play. Crowley's shot is off. Ball is tipped away by Copeland. It'll go back Marauder's way. Again, this is a team that can score punches and bunches. So it's not unheard of them to go on an 11-12 point run with three minutes left. But these next few possessions here are going to be big answers for Belmont as Naruzi holds. Beverly student section supporting their Panthers defensively. Annis now. That's the rumble you hear. It's not a train. Working on Boris is Annis. Takes an elbow to the face, fights through it, and converts. No call. No, good move by Annis inside, though, to, to squeeze that shot off. Mac, one of the smartest basketball players on this Belmont team. Senior captain is something special. The Marauders will certainly miss him when he's gone. Here's Moreland, just inside the line. Shot's good for two. If you're the Marauders, you just kind of want to win these last three and a half minutes and build some momentum going into the uh, second half. As uh, Annis uh, tosses up another one, I think he might have been fouled in the act of shooting. No, he was nope, fouled was on, on the floor, floor by okay. Boris. It's going to be Boris' Boris. second foul. That's enough to pull him to the bench, Damian Boris, the senior guard. Neruzzi to inbound. Having trouble finding a man, but Minikazi slips free up top. Nice take there by Tim. Easy shot for him. Also looks a little bit here like Beverly's devolved into kind of an interior zone where they just, yeah. you know, they're, they're kind of forcing the Marauders once they get to like about six feet from the basket. You're stopped. You're going to have to either shoot here or pass it off. Copeland now. Hands it off to Crowley. Crowley takes PJS to the baseline. They're going to get him for an offensive Ooh. foul, and that's a good call. It is, yeah. He did throw a little bit of a, of a little forearm shiver there at... Uh, Jackson Stevens and uh, he's actually uh, going to go over and check out of the ball game here. Uh, maybe yeah. that's a smart move by uh, Coach Karakoudis. Uh, that was you know, a hard, was, hard shoulder into PJS's upper body area. First thing really Crowley's done wrong this uh, whole half. It happens. It was a good, strong take. Presto just had position. Here's PJS now. Working off of the top side screens. Naruzzi right to the rack. He goes, oh, puts nice it in the pass. left, and finishes. Great penetration there by Naruzzi. He's done a lot of that this yeah. year. He's special. Great off the drive is Ali Naruzzi. Only a junior, of course. As the Belmont faithful implore their Marauders to finish the half strong. Pass inside. Mack rises. Mm. And they're going to get him on the foul. The Marauder faithful just kind of waiting for something to be excited about here at uh, the Songus Center, and uh, that's all they need. Need a little bit of juice. Mac talking to the official here. He's caught a couple of tough ones. Got a tough yeah. double dribble, and then a tough call there. Belmont has been on a six to two run over the last two minutes. Lead shrunk from three. 16 to 12, and here's Moreland. First one's good. He'll get the second half of the one and one. You know, I'm excited. One of my assistants, Bobby Silva, is here and probably going to be able to get a hot dog at halftime because he's here. Real excited about that. Well, I'm out of cash, Bob. I'm assuming you, I'm assuming you have some. 
I don't am, people just give you things because you're the famous Coach Q? They I do. Mean, what, I you mean, don't, you don't have to be begging for it. That's, but, but if I <laughs> beg for it, I get more. <laughs> Minikazi goes hard to the floor. They're going to call a jump ball, I believe. What? And it's going to be Belmont basketball underneath. He went to the floor. It should have been a foul. Yeah, kind of well, if they were both touching the ball simultaneously as sure. they were going to the floor, referee could call the jump. Yeah. They're early jump calls in high school, too. Mm. They're a little fast on it. Nice mm. look inside. Dishes it out. Does Minikazi to Naruzi. The three-pointer doesn't go. Belmont still hasn't made a three here in this game. Long pass to Copeland. Steps back with Arno in his face. Shots no good. PJS has Annis to his right. There you Easy go. take for him. Looks behind him and converts. 12-point deficit now. Got to close this half out strong if you're the Marauders. Coach Karakoudis imploring his Panther team to slow down and hold possession. Taking the baseline there is Moreland, can't finish. Arno grabs the board, but they're going to call a foul on the floor. And that should be enough to send Belmont to the one and one. And it is. They're going to get Nick Braganica on that foul. I believe it's his first foul for the sophomore forward. Belmont with a chance to shrink it to 10 if Arno makes both of these. Got to make the first one to get to the second one, though, Todd. Those, those are the rules. Yes, I, I do believe that's the case on the one and one. It's just math. Yeah. First one's a little bit long. Braganica's up with it. That equation didn't solve itself, unfortunately. Did not. I hate it when that happens. Here's Dela Cruz walking it across. 30 seconds or so left in the half. About 15 on the shot. Scoots it over to Dela Cruz, does number 40 Ayer. Dela Cruz takes the baseline, passes it right to Avery Arno, yeah. and then Dela Cruz fouls Arno, so Arno will go to the line again. Chance to redeem himself here. Redemption. A dish best served cold. I no. think that's revenge. Uh, <laughs> redemption's good cold, too. <laughs> I don't know about that. It is. <laughs> is it? It is. I, I prefer an al dente myself. <laughs> yes. Redemption goulash. <laughs> What about Redemption Al Dente? No. Redemption Al Dente. Arno, first one's good. Redemption Al Dente. Kind of like me, slightly undercooked. <laughs> I do. Somebody's phone is ringing here. It's probably Jeremy's. Well, it's on your table. I thought that was your phone. Definitely not mine. Oh, okay. It's about a 90% chance that's a robo call as Arno oh, yeah. hits the second, <laughs> and it's a 10 point game. Shot cross off. Beverly likely will hold for a last shot here. Dela Cruz. Walks across half court with Annis eyeing him suspiciously. Moreland picked up by a pesky Arno. Now Ayer to Moreland. Moreland wheels, takes it inside, can't take it to the rack, throwing it up as Dela Cruz, no good. So Belmont was on the short end of a 16 point deficit, finds themselves. 34 to 24, 10 point deficit yep. at half, still in this ball game. Oh, absolutely, right. coach. I mean, they close out that last three and a half minutes on a 10 4 run. The defense picked up. Uh, they, and again, they've done all this without having to make a, they haven't made a three pointer yet, which is, I know, a big part of their game. And uh, so once the, those three point shots start to fall in the second half, which I expect they will. Marauders can really uh, start making a run at this uh, deficit. Overall, things could be a lot worse. I think the Marauders will take it at this point, the 10-point uh, deficit here. Really going to be interesting. It's very similar to what happened in the in the Latin Academy game, where Latin Academy went out to a big lead. They stretched it to a big lead. And then Belmont was able to come back, and they were able to trim it you know, to about eight, nine points going into the half. And then they came out, and they had an explosive third quarter. So that's what I'm looking for here is, is this team going to be able to replicate pretty much exactly what they did in their previous round game against the Latin Academy. And the bigger Dragons. question going into halftime, Coach, is are you going to get your hot dog? Oh, no. I'm going to have to send Bobby over there because I see all these people, you know, they're streaming for the concession stand. So uh, we'll update you guys on Hot Dog Gate 2020 as soon as we come back. I'm Jan Kuhlman. He's Todd Bloniars. We're going to take a halftime break, dab our way out on the BHS Sports TV network. Hello. <laughs> we are back here at the uh, Songus Arena. Uh, this is the Division II North boys basketball final with a trip to TD Garden on the line. The third seeded Belmont Marauders currently trailing the top seeded Beverly Panthers by a score of 34 to 24. Belmont has trailed by as many as 16 points and uh, one of the reasons for that is Jack Crowley's 15 first half points to lead the Panthers. 
on the attack. Uh, Belmont was able to close out the, half, uh, the first half or that second quarter strong on a 10-4 run, which actually gave them a 16-15 advantage in the second quarter. Now to here to bring you the call of the second half action from Sox Arena is the one and only Coach Q. <laughs> I, Todd, thanks so inimitable. much. Inimitable. That was the word I was looking I, for. I so. apologize. I was uh, putting two hot dogs. Oh, see, we, I was trying to make it. that seamless like I was just building up to your intro. No, see, what we do right here is we just blow right through, what is it, the fourth wall? We just, <laughs> we just blow right through it. It doesn't even exist. Yeah, right? exactly. The there ball. are no walls. We are the matrix of community <laughs> access television. There is no spoon. As Moreland's shot is good. 36-24. So the Marauders are going to have to work to answer back here. 12 points, the differential here. Starting the third quarter at the Saga Center, of course. This is the Division II North final. As Naruzi is going to get called for the travel. Lost his pivot foot on the reverse of direction. Well, and again, I think one of the one of the things I did not get into before your arrival, Coach, is it's uh, your return, I should say. Uh, you know, this Marauder team, which one of their strengths all year has been three-point shooting, four players over 30% on the season, none so far in this game. They've had about four or five attempts, which is also well below their average. Naruzi off of the Crowley miss is going to get the foul call, and that's going to be Ayer blocking foul, and it's going to send Naruzi to the line for two, and this is something that Belmont's going to need because traditionally... They're a very good free throw shooting team. They were four for five in the first half. I want to thank uh, Chet Messer for uh, giving the uh, halftime stats for None us better. here. None better. Ali Naruzzi with four first half points looking to build onto that and uh, making the first one right there. So uh, the other thing I would say here is, uh, you know, Naruzzi, the way he took the ball up the court quickly, that's what the Marauders are going to need. If they can't make these three pointers, they got to at least try to at least push it to Beverly. Again, the speed, use the speed that's been a strength for them all year. Naruzzi misses the second of two, 36 25 the score. Beverly leads. Here's Boris. Over to Dela Cruz, who looks inside to Ayer. Crowley now spins and fires, no good. Minikazi has position, but Ayer has the height. Second chance points for Ayer. First basket of the game for Austin Ayer. He was the only starter not to score for Beverly in the first half. Naruzzi over to Minikazi now. Minikazi being guarded by Dela Cruz, has it knocked away by Crowley, stays Belmont. Just across the five o'clock hour here in Lowell, Massachusetts. That would be Eastern Standard Time for e the last day. ST. We are a global broadcast, of course. Preston Jackson Stevens for three, and it's good. First three for the uh, Marauders in this game. That might be exactly what they need. Nine points now for Jackson Stevens. PJS, silky smooth from beyond the arc. Here's Moreland now off the head fake. Dishes it back, and that's Dela Cruz. His three doesn't go. Austin Ayer with the board. Nifty spin on Minikazi. Baseline, rack points. 40-28. Naruzzi over to Logan. Logan finds the lane, gets to the block inside to PJS. He loses the handle. To the floor is Austin Ayer. Knocked away, waiting for the call, and it's going to stay Belmont ball. So good ideas, but ball security a little bit wanting. Well, and again, maybe the inexperience of a sophomore like Logan. He's driving to the basket, making a strong move. He didn't finish. He was looking to just you know, kind of kick it back out again to someone where I think maybe he could have gone strong to the basket, either draw a foul or get one off the glass. Naruzzi, long skip pass to Logan up top. He'll give it to Annis, and Annis will set the offense. Uses the Logan screen to his left, finds a little bit of space. Runner's no good. Knocked away. It'll be Belmont ball. Number 10, Jack Crowley, imploring the baseline official to appeal it and ask for help, he says no. Naruzzi to inbound from the baseline, all the way up top to Minikazi. He finds some space, goes right to the rack, has it knocked away. Boris on one. Oh. <laughs> threw it over to Austin Ayer. He lost the handle and is able to get it back. Crowley now. Whistle will blow, and it looks like they're going to call a technical foul. What, a legal defense or no? It's no, uh, what and do they call the waiting to on? hear from the PA. Unsure what the call is there, folks. My apologies. Well, 
Not shot only that, but no, did, no shot clock right, reset. And, and no fouls. Uh, well, they, I mean, I think there was a foul on Belmont already, or on uh, Beverly already. Regardless, it's Moreland with the shot. He can't find the mark. And they're going to call a foul in the act of rebounding. That's going to be on number 40, Ayer. And the Beverly faithful offering their constructive criticism of that officiating decision, saying, do better. And uh, first substitution here as uh, Logan uh, heads to the bench for Belmont. As does Austin Ayer for Beverly, and number 23, Gabe Copeland, will check in for him. Looks like Jojo Stefano. excuse me, Tommy Ryder into the game for Belmont. Oh, okay. Well, Number three. Good. Haven't I, seen I, him yet today. We have not. First action of the night for Ryder. I, I look forward to Jojo because I think Jojo Stefano is just an awesome, awesome name. Well, of course. Of course, but that doesn't take away from Tommy Ryder. Dustin Boyd. In the words of Keith Jackson, is only a sophomore. Only a sophomore. Damian Boris called on the foul there, his third. Ryder over to Annis. Three quick to fouls 28. here. I'm sorry, sorry. Three quick fouls here in the third quarter for uh, Beverly. Nifty spin by Annis, but he can't finish. Gets his own rebound, scoots it back. It's Crowley up with it. Been a little bit of a rough night for Mac Annis. Back check from Preston Jackson. Stevens leads the ball getting thrown away. That was Dela Cruz pushing the pace. Marauder ball. Well, it's getting a little sloppy on both ends of the court here now, but. Uh, Here's Minikazi. Great action there by PJS. Step back three, no good. Crowley up with it. Notice he took that from the same spot where he had made the earlier three. He's a pretty good shooter. Here's Dela Cruz. Over to Copeland. Copeland looks inside, and they're going to get Ryder on the foul down low. You know, I know we talked a little bit about this in the first half, Coach, and I was also talking a little bit to, with Chet Messer at halftime. And uh, one of the things, you know, you, the, you've got the, it, the court that's four inches longer in length, and I think it might be a little wider as yep. well. The other factor here, too, I know you seem to like the, as we got a uh, shot there by 35, but uh, again, having all that empty space behind the basket, I think yeah. changes the spatial look that a lot of these yeah. players are used to seeing. Really true. I mean, you don't ever see a high school gym that looks at all like this. As Beverly comes up with the steal, Moreland's going to get a free path to the basket. Ryder thought he got all ball there. Referee disagrees. It's going to be the second on Tommy. One thing I'll say about Ryder, since this is his first appearance in the game, I'm expecting he's probably not going to play very much. You might as well be aggressive if you're going to be out there to play in a short spurt because yep. you've got five fouls to fill. So go out there, you know, go for steals if you want. And uh... Very true, as Moreland settles for his free throws. Looks like we're going to see Sh Tyler Shapazian checking back into the game here. As well as number 34, Nick Braganka. Preston Jackson Stevens will get a rest. Yeah, Pritchard's definitely doing a lot more substituting here uh, in this uh, beginning of the second half that he did to start the game. That might be a key. Pulls Preston over to talk with him a little bit. I don't imagine you're going to see Preston out for very long here as Naruzzi handles for Belmont. Looking inside to a flashing Annis, but good recovery from Dela Cruz, says no. Here's Ryder, keeps the foot, throws it back to Naruzzi, does a good job to stay with it. Annis now, 14 on the clock. Max gonna have to move. Shapazian sets the screen, Max steps back for three, off the back iron, no good. Belmont up with it, Ryder scoots it back to Annis. Chapazian in the corner, uses the rider screen, finds Naruzzi up top, drives behind the back, takes it to the hole, off the glass, and that's Ali Naruzzi. Vintage 2020 right there. There'll be a timeout, Belmont. Well, again, Naruzzi's been uh, one of the uh, Marauders playing well here to start this third quarter. Marauders right now have only really taken a point off that Beverly lead. Beverly getting offense from some unexpected sources. Austin Ayer with a six points after not scoring in the first half. Senior center, uh. excuse me, junior center, Austin Ayer. But you get the sense that Belmont is, it, it, they need to make a move soon. Yeah. Uh, this is a Beverly team that doesn't look like it's gonna give you, you know, a, a bunch of opportunities to score a bunch of points. And so you gotta make a move now. You gotta make a little bit of a run now. 
we'll see. And use that speed because, like you said, I mean, they can score a lot of points in a short period of time. They've proven that all season. Absolutely. And now we need to see it put to the test, really, when you need it most. I mean, if you had told me or told any Belmont person watching, you know, that the, this this team would be held to 30 points with 318 to go in the third low quarter. Total. Yeah, low I total. mean, that's well below their season average. I mean, I'm interested because I saw Pritch, Coach Pritchard grab PJS, pulled him off, had him standing there, was definitely talking some adjustment-oriented stuff. You could see it. And they called the timeout right on the back of that basket. So I'm curious if he's made some sort of systematic or systemic adjustments Probably, one yeah. way or another. You have to figure that's the case, especially when you're calling a timeout after you've just scored. Typically, you know, you call it after the other team has scored just to try to stop some momentum if they've gone on a run. Absolutely. A fantastic tactician is Coach Adam Pritchard. It's been a, an honor and a pleasure to watch him coach for the Takes last six years. Takes one to no years. one, right? Well, I could only hope. You know, I'm, I'm trying to fill his shoes in the fall. Adam's had a little bit more success than I have. 45-30 off of that Panther basket as Naruzzi works to answer back. Scoots it over to Shapazian. Shapazian to Ryder. Ryder to the streaking Naruzzi. He can't finish. Big board there by Tommy. Tries to put it back and cannot. Wow. Beverly up with it. But a lot of close misses for Belmont, too. We've talked about all the threes they haven't made, but yep. just a lot of easy shots inside, too, that have, they haven't converted. A lot on. of inside two-point opportunities, you know, that just have not fallen. Moreland. Pressured by Minikazi, whistle's going to blow, and that's a timeout. You know, I like the idea uh, of that that pressure defense, and I almost hope we start to see maybe more of like a full court kind of a defensive pressure. Um, I mean, I was at a college game last night where the team, you know, the, the team that took off to like a 20-point lead, and they led big, they led by 17 at halftime. They were throwing all sorts of half-court pressure on, although it did wear them out, because by the end of the game, they ended up losing. Uh, it was actually Tufts who came from behind in that game oh, after nice. being down as many as 20. That was a first-round NCAA tournament game. Roll so Jumbos. congratulations to the Jumbos. Playing in that uh, old-fashioned uh, Hoosier-like place called yep. Cousins Gymnasium. Oh, Great place to see a game if you've it ever really been. It really is. It's, Cousins it's, is awesome, man. Yeah. That's a friend of mine won to go last night, so I said, I'll go with you. Yeah, sure. And we got that to is see. very Hoosiers-esque. Mm. Which, have, and you, have you seen the trailer, they had by to, the way? By the way, they had to pivot the whole court like uh, 90 degrees so that they could actually host NCAA tournament Turner, games because yeah. the court was originally too short in length. Yep. And uh, they couldn't actually host games when they meant, went to the tournament, so thankfully they moved it. I'm very. I'm going well to ask your, uh, your opinion at the quarter break about the new Ben Affleck movie, The Way Back. Which I'm just calling okay, Hoosiers 2.0. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know the clip. It's like the trailer if you, made a, if like, you yeah. made a Hollywood movie about the drunk coach in Hoosiers, <laughs> the drunk dad, could, yeah. it, it would be this. It would be Ben Affleck. It would be Ben Affleck <laughs> in the way back. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet either. The I'm just trailer judge, does I'm judging yeah. off the trailer. Ooh, but we got a basketball hands, game here as Annis comes hands. away with the steal. Foul's going to be called on the floor after Annis knocked it away. I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, the lacking basketball scoreboard for fouls here. I don't know if you can see it on the other side or what, but there's no foul on number. Oh, right, yes, okay, we have the team foul total. We have team foul okay, totals, yeah. but no personal foul totals. Yeah. Belmont working here, coming up on two minutes in the third. Ooh. Minikazi with a nifty layup. <sighs> Too much English. Rolls out. Step back behind the line is Annis. He can't finish, usually automatic from there. Been a tough night shooting the three for Mac Annis. Annis, a 39% shooter from long distance this season, coming into this game and has not made one tonight. I think that might have been about his third or fourth attempt. Not something that we're used to seeing from Automacus. Ah, nice. You like that? <laughs> Copeland dishes it off to Moreland. Easy look for him. 47-30. Almost all their second half points have come from Austin Air and Gabe Copeland, who was their only bench scorer in the first half. Freshman Gabe Copeland. Ryder, Minikazi with a deep three. It's good. Belmont can find its way back. They shoot well enough to find their way back. That would be their second tray of this uh, half. Moreland over to Copeland. Here comes the press. Moreland from oh, Ayer, excuse me, from back. Crowley. Preston Jackson Stevens able to come up with it in the paint. Long pass nice to pass. Annis, right to the rack he goes and he's gonna get the foul. Yeah, nice pass there too. Uh, finding Annis down low and drawing the contact. The foul's gonna be called on Copeland. And Annis will go to the stripe for two. 
On a knee at the scorer's table is Austin Ayer and Damian Boris, both for the Beverly Panthers as Annis hits from the strike. Copeland will take a seat, excuse me, Greg Hanko will take a seat, as will number 10, Jack Crowley. So a great opportunity here with 119 with arguably Bill Ricca's best player on the bench for a rest. Yeah, well, Crowley hadn't even scored yet in the third quarter, so it may not be a bad point for him to, uh, to get a rest after he scored 15 in the first half. Uh, Rodgers are now seven for nine from the free throw line in this one. Belmont a little bit more aggressive in their defensive set. Closing inside one minute. Good look inside there, there but it it's knocked away by Shapazy. Minikazi Whoa. goes for the long pass wow. up the sideline and then commits the foul. De La Cruz there with some nice hands. And, I mean, you saw the court vision there by the Marauders. He, he, had, he had Annis open down here, and it just all of a sudden, De La Cruz jumped in and intercepted the pass. I think you'd like a little football jargon there, Coach. He's kinda, good. You know. <laughs> but certainly a nice job there by De La Cruz. Beverly's been very active on transition defense all night as Moreland dishes it off down low to Dela Cruz. A little give and go there. 49-35 and Beverly's starting to run away. Tommy Ryder's going to take the open space, go right to the block. Knocked away by Copeland, but the foul. Foul's going to be on Yek Copeland. Uh, and it looks like they're going to make a quick substitution. Kevin Regan, number four, is going to check in for, I believe, the first time tonight. First action of the game there for Regan once he gets into the game. Junior guard on a knee by the scorer's table. First one from Ryder is good, 49-36. Yeah, his first point of the game is uh, Ryder's uh, running out of time here. As we said, Coach, you were just a few seconds away from the final eight minutes of regulation. Ryder's have work to do. Two for two goes Tommy Ryder. Naruzi comes back in. Shapazian will take a seat. The aforementioned Kevin Regan is into the game for the Panthers. Now and there's the full court pressure I was kind of looking for and expecting at some point here from the Marauders. And it forces a turnover. Nice set there, forces the turnover. The Marauders have been more of a trap team than a full-on press team so far this year that, that I've seen, but they've done a really good job of it. Good to see that active trap defense there. Naruzi on the block. Dishes it off to Preston Jackson-Stevens. Contact not called, and Presto can't finish. Mack ties him up, and it stays Belmont. Not over yet, folks. 49-37, 12 points, 28.2 left in the third. Whole other quarter of basketball to play here, and the Belmont faithful are on their feet. Just the biggest shock is looking at the scoreboard and realizing it's late third quarter. Both these teams, I think, are surprised at what, they're, what they've scored for points so far in this one. Naruzi to PJS up top. He takes it. He takes, uh, excuse me, Duncan Morrill into the lane, but can't finish. Jackson Stevens had two easy misses there in the last few seconds. Annis knocked that away. His shot for three is no good. Ryder up with it. Scoots it to Naruzi. He shoots for three. That's no good. Moreland up with it. Shots just not falling for Belmont from beyond the arc tonight as the kick back to Dela Cruz. Shots up off the back iron. Big rebound there, Moreland shoots. The finish from De La Cruz draws the foul, and he'll go to the strike for with two. With no time left in that third quarter. I gotta tell you here, Coach, that last sequence for the Marauders might have just been you know, a whole microcosm of this game. You had two missed layups down low, and then two missed threes out deep. It's just been that kind of a snake-bitten day on, on Belmont shooting. Coach Pritcher wants to have a conversation on that foul call. He's certainly frustrated. The official doesn't want to have a conversation about it and is sending him back to the box. Coach Pritch not one to harp on officials. He's usually a very calm guy. Yeah. Um, I call it the Pritchard shuffle because it's a little head shake and a smile and a walk away usually yeah. in his conversations with officials. But he has certainly seen something he doesn't like here and he's expressing it respectfully, of course. As we go two for two from the stripe, does Justin De La Cruz, and that makes it a 51-37 game. So Belmont is going to have a 14-point deficit to overcome here in the fourth quarter. Todd, you mentioned kind of that last defensive set, a little bit of a microcosm for the Marauder game tonight. 
can they come back from this? Well, that third quarter, Marauders actually got outscored 17-13, so the lead grew from 10 to 14. You, you really thought the third quarter was going to be Belmont's to take and you know try to take over this game, go on a run, really close the gap, and instead Beverly's just widened the gap. I mean, if the Marauders can start hitting some shots, you never know. But you know, right now it just it feels like you know they they couldn't. You know, it's, and again, maybe it is this kind of the whole spatialness of the fact mm -hmm. that you've got a basketball court set on top of a of what's normally a, it would be for they play hockey here too, obviously at the Songus Arena, and so it's just you know as a shooter you're back there at the three point arc, you're looking, you see a lot of empty There's seats lot behind of you. So right, maybe that's part of the reason why they're missing these threes. It, it, they're, it's just not the same kind of views and angles that these broader. Although, teams see if you go to Coach Lyons Court at the Renner. The view Deservedly named for Coach Lyons, by the way. I just absolutely. want to mention that. The view going away from yeah. the entry side has that whole other court on the other side of it. So oh, well, there's, okay. there's some space there. Less space going in the right. other direction. But it's not a huge arena with rows mm -hmm. and rows of seats, right? It is yeah. still a little oh, yeah, bit of a right. different, different sure. optic. Yes. Um, and just a different Definitely energy. So. I mean, yeah. this is the Division II Finals, the Division II North Finals. It's a big moment. The competition rises, of course. Every round you go, it gets a little bit tougher, and this is an 18-2 and two Beverly team playing yeah. like an 18-2 and two Beverly and team. And a number one seed that deserved a first-round buy in this sectional. Here's number three, Boris. Dishes it off to Crowley, who's checked back in for the fourth. Strong take Ooh. with the touch. Crowley's first points of the second half, now 17 for the game. Minikazi goes right to the rack. No contact, but the basket counts, and Tim's frustrated. He's getting contacted going to the rack there, and he's just not getting the calls he normally does. Those are usually three-point plays for Tim. Minikazi and Jackson Stevens are your leading scorers on the Belmont side with nine each. Crowley almost has it knocked away by Annis. Minikazi stops his rush and turns him back. Boris now. Guarded by Mack. Beverly taking their time as Dela Cruz scoots it over to Ayer, to Moreland, to Crowley. Little spin move by Crowley. Ooh. Can't finish, but Dela Cruz puts it back. Well, and that was a similar move to what Dela Cruz made to close out the third quarter when he drew the foul and with no time left. Nifty little play there. Minikazi, great inside look to Neruzzi. Tries to scoot it over to Preston Jackson Stevens, but that's not happening. You know, he's only, Dela Cruz has only got six points in this game, but four of them have come on two hustle plays where he's followed up on missed shots. Big plays as Boris goes right to the rack and has it rejected by Mac Annis. And right now, of course, uh, Beverly's matched their biggest lead of the game at 16 right now with 6.32 to go here in regulation. Arno, Carey, and Shapazian are going to check into the game. Annis will sit. PJS will sit. And correction, Joe Carey's gonna step back out in exchange for Shapazian, get some instructions from Coach Pritchard, and wait on a knee at the scorer's table. Inbound from Dela Cruz to Moreland. Six minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the game. Dela Cruz now, guarded by Neruzzi, breaks him off. Kicks it over to Crowley. Set shot from the wing just inside the arcs. No good. Big rebound by Copeland. The freshman tries to put it back. Gets his own rebound there. Back up with it he goes. And that one falls. Two offensive rebounds there in that sequence for Beverly. Now 11 points for Copeland. Arno draws the foul on the take. I'll tell you, the Beverly crowd, uh, it certainly looks like They've outnumbered the uh, the Belmont contingent here. They have. They've outbrightened them too in terms of clothing. I don't know what this neon coloring is. I don't know what their I don't know what their theme is. Glow like, in the dark, perhaps. Is Belmont, that a theme? Belmont is that a, went with a beach out. I like the beach out. I like the Tommy Bahama shirt. I like it. Like I'm it. okay with it. I'm more of a, a a color out guy. You know, I like the blackouts, the whiteouts, the blue outs. You know, solid blocks of color. And the blowouts, you like those, uh, when you're on Taking the it side of those, right? Don't stop believing. <laughs> oh, my man went, went right to 80s hair. Born and raised in South Detroit, folks. Right to 80s hair. That's where I went. That's not what we were talking about, though, was it? It was not at all. Nope. Shucks. <laughs> Talk about going off on another tangent. Oh, sorry, we already got through. Right, we, already, we went through the math puns we in the went, first we half. We did. We went through all of them. Moreland on the baseline for Beverly, 57-41 the score. Inbounds to Crowley. Although the Marauders are going to need a few more shots behind the arc here to... Uh, they are. There, that's my last one. Co oh, arc. Yeah, yeah, well, that's... 
I didn't get that one right off the bat. Oh, okay. As Beverly calls a timeout. You're a funny guy. <laughs> Yeah, right. You're a funny guy, Todd. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got 5.49 left here. Rodgers are still trailing by 16 points. And uh, the good news here, if there's any at this point, is anytime uh, there's going to be a foul from Beverly the remainder of this fourth quarter, Rodgers are going to get free throws out of it. They are going to get the, the one and one. But, you know, aside from that, I mean, again, this, they've only made two three-pointers in this game. They're going to need to get a few more. They're, they're going to have to, you know, increase the defensive pressure. They've really got to play now with a complete sense of urgency. Yeah. You know, Coach Pritchard's got to pull up all the stops out here because there's a lot of points to make up in a relatively short period of time. I know you said the Marauders can score quickly, but still, you know, you, when Beverly's going to have the ball, every possession, they're going to try to milk down that 30-second shot yeah, clock. I'm not, ready to write, I'm, I'm not ready to write Belmont off just Nor yet. Nor am I. But I'm, what you just said, Todd, is that every single possession by the Beverly Panthers here, we're going to see them work the shot clock down to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And that's just going to eat opportunities away. So the Marauders have to be smart with the basketball. They have to be aggressive in their defensive set. And they have to, have to, have to, in these last five minutes and 50 seconds, finish. And that is something they haven't done all night. I love during these breaks how I kind of flip the script, but now we, we go back to Q on play-by-play. -play. <laughs> it's good. Nice dish there by Copeland. Moreland can't finish. Chapazian struggling to get the rebound, but finally secures it. Here's Carey. Carey with speed, pulls it back out to Shapazian, Shapazian to Logan. Logan finds a little space and then tries to pass it back outside. Thought he had a good look to the basket I did there. Too. And Boris is going to get followed by Carey. Yeah, that was, again, another tough sequence. I was with you there, Coach, because it looked like he, he did have the easy path to the basket and uh, passed it up. I think they want that, they want that three. You know, they must be well, for according the to something Chet Messer handed me before the game, which I'm going to use now, the effective field oh goal percentage accounts for the fact that a three-point field goal is worth one more point than a two-point field goal. See? It's spelled out right there in the EFG percentage. EFG percentage equals two feet FGM plus bracket open 1.5 times three. So every field goal, every three-point field goal gets a 1.5 added value, and then that's divided by field goals attempted. That is correct. And that will give you your... And then I, I imagine you will multiply that by 100% in that order to right. get an actual percentage. You, there you go. And that's how you do the varsity drag, folks. Math. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> Naruzi for Belmont. Five minutes and 20 seconds remain. Here's Mac Annis. Cross up, step up, jumper from the elbow. It's good. 58-43 the score. Belmont trails by 15. That was after Beverly had increased their lead to their largest of the night. Long pass by Dela Cruz to Boris. He's hassled by Naruzzi. Takes Minicozzi to the hole. Good defense there by Tim. Knocked away. Belmont ball. Well, and you know, the Marauders caught a little break there. It's almost like Belmont sort of played back and said, we're going to give you the layup if you want to. So don't use up all the, the shot clock on that possession. <laughs> yeah, and, and they fell for it. They went for the quick layup and missed it, and it went out of bounds. So Marauders got a break there. That's the old Bugs Bunny play as Mac Annis yeah. uses the right. And then and he will foul in, Crowley, yeah. trying to get the ball out. A little overeager there was Matt. You know, and you really hate to see this. You've talked about what a career Mac Annis has had and what he a good has. shooter he is, and he just he can't make anything. To, it's really been a it's struggle for him. been a rough night for Mac. For his last college game, it's, uh, or high school game, so. Yeah, but a special He is headed off to, where is he? Do we know where he's headed? I forget or? where Mac's going to school. Okay. Anybody know where Mac's going to school next year? No? Asking the booth. The booth doesn't know. Chet knows. Chet? Chet. Where's, where's Mac Annis. Annis going to school next year? Where's Annis going to college next year? Uh, Roger Williams. Roger Williams, oh. okay, Roger Williams University. There you go. Roger Williams. But no, he's had a great career here with Belmont. A thousand point score, obviously, that's a fantastic threshold to cross. Any high school basketball player who, who crosses oh. that threshold is in a special club. Absolutely. And yeah. Mac most certainly is. 59-43 as it's Crowley at the stripe. He's been fantastic for the Panthers tonight. Second one doesn't find the mark, but Copeland. Another offensive rebound. He's up with it. Boris. They can't have any more of those now if you're Belmont. No. You can't allow them. Spinning is Boris, has it knocked away by Logan. Preston Jackson Stevens is running now, kicks it over to Mack, and Mack off the glass for two. That's what we've seen a lot of. That's Belmont basketball yep. right there. If you can believe it, Belmont got their first player in double figures with Annis' layup. He's got 10. Moreland beats the press for Beverly. Minikazi going to SWAT and gets called for the foul as Copeland goes to the ground. And he'll go to the stripe. 
I mean, if you told me at this stage of the game, Coach, that freshman Gabe Copeland would be outscoring Mac Annis and the, the decorated career he's had uh, on the uh, basketball floor uh, and the milestones. I mean, it's 11 to 10 here. It's a, and now 12, you made the first free throw. Sure did, 60-45 the score, 417 remaining. Second one from Copeland is good. This kid is somebody to watch. If you follow Massachusetts basketball, number 23, Gabe Copeland for Beverly is a freshman and is a fantastic ball player. Annis now. Picks the dribble up and finds Naruzi. Naruzi takes Copeland inside, loses the handle, pushes it over to Logan. Crowley goes to the floor. Ball's tipped by Moreland. They're going to call him for the foul. I believe. And again, I don't want to be too critical on the Marauders here, but one of the things you have to realize when you're down this many points, kicking the ball back out, I mean, at this point, if you've got a pretty high percentage shot or something close to the basket, you got to take it and then just move on, play defense. Go I mean, to the you rack. can't. Right, you, you can't kind of fiddle and diddle and waste time here with just 4-0-1 to go. It's the hot take from Todd Bloniars. Yikes. <laughs> that was lukewarm at best, I think. That's that's a hot take for BMC. <laughs> okay. We're we're pretty we're a pretty homer. You can hear more of those on timeout for sports talk. There, oh, sorry. oh wow, a shameless self promotion. Yeah, well, wasn't it? Love it. Yeah. Beverly free throws are good. Excuse me, Belmont free throws are good, 61 a, to 47. And now uh, Jackson Stevens in double figures with 11. It's been a great junior year for PJS. He's been a special player to watch. Inside of four minutes here. And a soon to be senior football captain. He sure is. Duncan Marlin with the cramp. One handed slam brings the Beverly crowd to their feet. 63-47. Well, that might have been the exclamation point on this one. Uh, PJS tries to answer back with a three. Minikazi fighting for the board, and Moreland's going to get another crack at it. Doesn't do it again. Well, there was pressure behind him. I think that's why he just decided to take the layup there. But biggest lead now for Beverly. Annis for three. Quiets the crowd a little bit, and Coach Pritch answers with a timeout. 65-50, three minutes and 23 seconds left. The Beverly faithful are on their feet applauding. And there's a little bit of a conversation going on here. Curious as to what the issue was. Well, I think they, they're, I think right now we're getting an announcement from the PA announcer to just kind of, you know, no demonstrations, no trying to rush the court or anything. I think there, there were probably some Beverly, eager Beverly fans wanting to, they were getting a little too overexcited down there. And I think that was just a, a message from Understandably so. Of course, Beverly beating Malden Catholic and Burlington to get here had the bye in the first round. Convincing win against Malden Catholic, 81 to 60. Tighter game against Burlington, 67 Turnover. to 60. And oh, wait, Belmont wait. will get the ball back. Yeah, okay. Still 15 point spread here, three well, minutes. And Mac Annis had just moments ago there made his first three pointer of this game, only the third for Belmont, but if they can get on a roll from out there. Crazier still... things have happened. Yeah. Minikazi kicks it outside to Naruzi. Like Naruzi that. hits. Yeah. Timeout, Belmont. Yeah, there you go. How about that? A three for Annis, force a turn, they throw the pass away, and then Naruzi hits a three. Six <laughs> points in about. Uh, about five seconds. You can't fall into the trap, Beverly can. Actually, it was exactly five. It was 323, now it's 318, so there you go. Can't fall into the trap. Beverly can't fall into the trap of thinking it was over with the Moreland duck, right? That was a big mm. emotional moment, right. capstone moment, one-handed cramp. Can't fall into the trap of thinking right. that's the end of the ball game. Six quick points from Belmont, 12 points. Right. That was in five seconds. So you're, you're back to what you said right at the start of this yep. game, Coach. Uh, Marauders can score quickly. Well, there you go. It took, you know, it took us time. almost four quarters, but they we've seen it. And you one know, one more turnover, one more three-point play, and we're inside a single-digit spread here. So right, you know, you get this down to like a maybe a three-three possession game or something. Again, I think you're just going to need to see more pressure from the Marauders here, as they did on that last inbound pass. I think we're going to see it again. Full court pressure. You force them to try to break it throw something deep down the court or whatever, whatever it might take on their front, but you're gonna have to you know, do that, get some hands in there. Coach Pritchard, the one that he's done this second half very well, he substituted a lot, and I think it's kept everyone relatively fresh here for this yeah. stretch run where they can kind of put that clamp on pressure defense. And this is a, a well-conditioned Belmont team. 
well-conditioned Belmont team. They work hard, they work hard in practice, and we've seen them outrun pretty much everybody that they've played, minus the Beverly Panthers. Here's Crowley. Aggressive trap by Belmont. Moreland now, he'll cross half court. Naruzzi on his back, has it knocked away by PJS, but it'll stay Panther basketball. With 22 to shoot, and I would expect that uh, Beverly will try to again milk this entire 22 seconds if they can. I'll bring the shot. I'll bring the clock down to probably about two minutes and 50 or so. Inbound to Crowley, and he's going to get fouled and go to the block. Excuse me, go to the strike. Well, Kyle, a, it's Chapazian. a block too. There's it is a block. Yeah, they're going to get Chapazian on the foul. Crowley has a chance to be the first player in this game to reach the 20 point mark if he can hit both of these free throws. Lee okay. Beverly's missed just one or two free throws in this game. They've, they've been a, a very solid fundamental basketball team mm. as Crowley misses the first. I do, I do what I can. They've played with, with great energy. They've played with great energy. They have, yeah. Second from Crowley is good. 13 point difference. Here's Naruzzi. Kicks it out to Shapazian for three. Air ball. That'll draw the raspberries from the student section. That's the, the other thing is you don't have to, even though you might think that every possession has to end in the three, it really, if you can just quickly go to the basket and get a quick two, that's fine. That's just as fine. Although again, I'm sorry, do I have to go back to my definition of, a, of an E? Yeah, the e EFG. EFG. Right, it says here a three-pointer is worth more than one more point than a two-pointer. So. Math. I've been shut up again by it's the math. EFG. Crowley, Beverly has numbers. Della Cruz will slow it down. Over to Boris. Playing a little keep away now are the Panthers. Boris to Crowley. Thinks about the pass to Moreland, then takes it right to the block. No go. Copeland with the rebound. Has it knocked away by Naruzzi. Della Cruz up with it. Shot clock is not reset as Naruzzi Official steals. Official helps that out, I think. Over to Annis. Annis' shot is good. That was going to go out of bounds, but it hit the official. Second week we've seen that. 66 to 55 as Belmont creeps within 11 and the timeouts are flying. Belmont only has two timeouts remaining after this one. 15 points now for Mac Annis, 11 of them here in the second half. And uh, you know, just as I was about to say that Beverly again has just had so many second and third chance opportunities that again they did on that possession and the Marauders get bailed out because the official was in the right place on the sideline, which I think they're talking about right now. I love it. We had a against, I believe it was against either Redding or Bill Ricca, we had one go the other way. Uh, a ball that was going to be thrown away by, I think it was the Bill Ricca game, was about to be thrown away by the Indians, hit the official, got knocked back into play, and Bill Ricca was able to preserve the possession. Well, as it is, this is now just a four-possession game with 2.29 to go. Riders have shown a little bit of life here behind the uh, three-point line, and yeah, I mean, as you say, it's not... It's doable. I mean, the crazy thing as we look at it here is this notion of finish, that if they had the finish that they've had in the last five or six minutes here, if they had that just in spurts in the second or first quarter, we're talking about a really different basketball game here. The Marauders are only a couple of takes away from this being, you know, a two-possession game with two and a half minutes to go. So we'll see what it is that they're able to do here as Beverly does have possession. Moreland set to inbound. Two minutes and 30 seconds, 66 to 65 the score. And the Marauders playing aggressive defense here. Crowley across half court to Dela Cruz. Dela Cruz bounces it over to Moreland. He goes right to the rack, forces the shot. Really didn't need to, but Crowley bails him out. Not a great decision by Moreland, but Jack Crowley did it well there. And Minikazi draws the foul, hoop and the harm. I like that, the hoop and the harm. But, you know, hey, it's a, you match back the two points, you get a chance to, you know, outgain them on the possession. And uh, But again, the Riders have got to stop these second chance opportunities for Beverly. You know, Beverly's not been shooting lights out here. And if they can, as unfortunately the Marauders haven't either, but they get the rebound, good hustle. It's a rare missed free throw from Tim Minikazi. Naruzzi now. Got it. Annis. Step back three, knocked away by Dela Cruz. Yeah, he knew that up. was coming. Crowley working to beat the press with Boris, and he does. Long pass to Copeland, scoots it over to Moreland, takes it in on Minikazi, finishes. 
70-57 with 142, and we're getting close. Yeah, we are. We definitely are. Uh, you know, uh, again, another uh, chance here for Moreland trying to put an exclamation point on this game for his team. Uh, you know, oddly enough, though, I think when it comes to, you know, a guy in Beverly who's made, made the little plays in this game, how about Justin De La Cruz? I mean, a couple of key keeping possessions alive on the offensive end for the Panthers, and then just right there when, you, you know, Annis was going with the three and, and De La Cruz, good pressure defense, got a piece of it enough to, you know, deflect it away. Duncan Moreland. Continuation is good, three-point play. I think he's closing in on 20 points uh, as well here. Arno goes right to the rack with the left hand, but can't finish. Moreland's up with it, battles away from PJS. PJS on his oh. back, rejected by the rim. Still a pulse. PJS, left hand to take his short. Shapazian tries to scoot it over to Naruzi, but Moreland is there. Mm. Timeout, Beverly. Oh. So Moreland got rejected by the rim on the dunk, but the scoreboard makes him feel a little bit less of a sense of shame yeah, on no, that Yeah, I one. know, I know. But if there is such a thing as karmic payback, I mean, it's, you know, you'd like to say, uh, but the Marauders are definitely running out of time here. Just 80 seconds to go, and it's, uh, it's, well, it's a five possession game now. And uh, in fact, they haven't gotten any closer since the last time out. So it's, yeah. I mean, the why so quiet chant. Always so poignant and, and you know, cutting. And this Belmont team, too, I think after the way their season ended last year at, at TD Garden against Tech Boston, a good team, mind you, a very talented team. Very. Uh, but, you know, they wanted it. This is the redemption tour. It's, I think you'd probably say it yeah. for this this team. And, you know, it's been a great tournament run for them, and they just have been kind of taking it one game at a time. And I really think they were looking forward to having the opportunity to get back to the, you know, as as they as we, the uh, folks, uh, Crosby, Sills, and Nash would say, get back to the garden. Yeah. You know, and uh, this is definitely I'll spit a, it out at some point. It's a <laughs> tough, but it's a tough way for this team to close out. Mm. You know, they've been a really talented team. They were the three seed, 16 and four. You know, had to overcome some different identity approaches versus previous years. Um, had some lineup shuffles, you know, as the, as the season went on. Um, adjusted to that, had a great team identity, and we need to be clear here, nothing to be ashamed of no. for these Belmont Marauders. I mean, to make the Division II Finals here at the Songus, opportunity to play for the Garden, this is further than 99% of all the high school basketball teams in the state get get to, yeah. so you know we're pretty super excited for our Belmont Marauders and what they've been able to do. Well, absolutely, no, no question about that, Coach. And of course, you know, at this time, as we're starting to wind down here in the final you know, couple of minutes, potentially here, you know, you look at the seven seniors, uh, guys playing in their last college game, guys like Tim Minakazi and Mac Annis, of course. Uh, you know, uh, press, uh, not sorry, uh, uh, Joseph Carey, uh, Sohail Hadri, is that yep. right? Okay. Sohail Hadri. Uh, of course, Avery Arno. Uh, Mike G and Gregorio, Tyler Shapazian, and uh, and uh, your favorite name, number five, Jojo Stefano. Jojo, Jojo De Stefano. Nice take there by Preston Jackson Stevens. I'll tell you something. There's a, there's an aspect of the Beverly cheer that I like very much, which, which is, is the, which is the oh at the end of every cheer. They shake their hand. They go oh. And what's that supposed to be? Yeah, it's, like a like a the, it's a taunting. It's a taunting. Of the of the other student section, uh, I like that. Not taunting. I thought we weren't supposed general. to encourage taunting amongst the. Uh, no, student cheering sections cheers. go back and forth. That's what oh, they do. That's oh, what oh I see. Okay, do. right. Well, they have their own set of. A I see some folks dressed in striped uh, referees jerseys down there trying yeah, to. Yeah, those like, are you know. those are just kids. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, Where, I, okay. I, oh, really? I yeah. thought they were officials. All right. Jeez, thank, thanks for straightening thank me goodness, out there. Thank goodness, Tom. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm you know I'm nervous. Wow. Yeah, uh, Chet uh, Messer just let me know. Uh, Beverly in this game, 13 for 16 from the foul line. That's, uh, That's the that, game. How about second chance points, which we haven't been keeping track of, but mm. if we were, uh, you know, Beverly's been cashing in big time in that category as well here. So we're down to the final 69 ticks here in regulation time. Well, unless we see some Al Michaels shades of miracle play here in the next minute nine, the last team remaining in postseason play for Belmont will be the Belmont boys hockey team. Surprised they didn't call a foul there. We had a little collision at midcourt. Now they're going to call them. 
call's gonna be on the floor. Girls hockey, of course, unfortunately losing today. Todd, you to, were at that yeah, game? To Austin, a very good Austin prep team that it, uh, continues to march on. They're now 21-2, wow. led today by an eighth grader. Wow, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, uh, she had uh, two goals and an assist. Oh, goodness. Uh, assisted on the third goal and a 3-0 win for them. Monique Lyles, I think, is wow. her. Uh, let's see if I remember her name. Lyons, sorry, Lyons. Monique Lyons. But a good run, a good run for women. Oh, hockey. no question. A 15-4-4 four four finish for uh, for the team. And uh, you know, Coach Ken as Murphy. As they've gone. Uh, I, I believe it's one of the deepest runs in program history. As, uh, we're seeing a substitution here. And actually, JoJo's coming into the ball game for, he is. for the Marauders. Is for Preston Jackson-Stevens. Actually, I think at this point, this could be signs of the white flag by it Coach is. Pritchard. He wants to get some other guys in who haven't. You know, necessarily played much during this recent playoff run. So uh, the this is the end of it. Annis will sit. PJS will sit. Sahail will check into the Some game. Some of those seniors we mentioned earlier who uh, don't necessarily contribute a lot of minutes to the team are getting their chance it's now. It's a full Here's senior still. lineup right now. Uh, minus Mac, but Avery's a senior. Carey's a senior. Shapazian's a senior. DeStefano's a senior. And Sahail Hajri on the low block, a senior as well. So the last one minute of basketball here of the season will be played by an all-senior lineup. Joe Carey tucks and takes, can't find the mark. Gonna get a foul called on the rebound. And Beverly's excited. As they know, this is their path to the garden, 55.9 seconds away. Yeah, well, realized. they deserve it. I mean, the, sec the second chance opportunities they create for themselves, offensive rebounding, uh, solid defense. They made enough shots. They've certainly been sterling from the uh, free throw line here in this one. And the Marauders just a, a lot of things uncharacteristic uh, for this team that uh, relied so much on speed and three-point shooting, and we didn't see enough of that on display today. Maybe a lot of that's a credit to, to Beverly's play. And I would tend to think it is. I mean, this is a good team. You're, you're this deep in the tournament. You're playing the number one seed in, in the north uh, sectional, and they're the ones going to be uh, moving on to TD Garden next week. They were certainly the better team this afternoon. Today, yeah. Today. They, they were certainly yep. the better team. They certainly deserve to win this game. They played the more complete game, the more physical game, the more fundamental game, and Belmont just was a little bit outside of their stride. DeStefano kicks it back. That's Chapazian. can't find the mark. Excuse me, that's Mike Gian Gregorio. 38 seconds remain. Matt McHugh on the floor for Belmont. Handling right now is Brennan Frost. Shot from the corner, rebounded inside. I'm operating with some numbers we haven't seen throughout the rest of the game. So it's Nick Fox down low on the block for Beverly. We're gonna see the freshman for Belmont, Colin Galloway. Played varsity all season, only a frosh is number 10, as he will pull out Carey. Shot clock is off. And the Beverly faithful wishing safe travels to the Belmont Marauder faithful. It's very nice of them. As Beverly will hold here, six seconds remaining. The crowd is on their feet for the Panthers. Silence across. Silence across the floor on behalf of the Belmont Marauder faithful, and that's gonna be the game. They cleared the score already, so it's hard to flash the score back, but a decisive, decisive win by the Beverly Panthers, who were absolutely the better team on the floor tonight, but a great, great tournament run by the Belmont Marauders, who I'm sure are frustrated by how their season has ended, but have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of as they have put another kind of brick in the wall of the house that Pritch built. Tremendous runs by this Belmont basketball team over the six years that I've been here, and a tremendous run for them tonight. Yeah, there's no question about that, Coach. I mean, you know, 19-5 and five finishes is nothing to sneeze at at all. It's a talented team. They've been to the D1 final now two years in a row. Uh, you know, and they've been just, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's been a great run. And even with the seniors graduating, I bet you, you know, you still see a lot of talented guys on this team. They'll, they'll be back next year, I bet you, to make another run at things. And, uh, 15 for Jackson, Stephen, 11 for Chet Messer 
feeding some stats over. To I am, yeah, uh, uh, yeah Mack Yannis led the uh, Marauders with 15 points, and then uh, also uh, uh, Ali Naruzzi with 13 and 11 for uh, Tim Minakazi. They helped lead the way on the uh, Beverly side. Crowley had the big first half of 15 points, but in the second half it was the Gabe Copeland, Duncan Moreland show that really led the way. And to me, the unsung hero, Justin De La Cruz, only ended up with like six points, but he... Uh, well, what you see there was, is uh, a real diversity of scoring, too, on, you know, on, on the part of the Beverly Panthers. And, and, you know, different scorers in the front end who were dominating the front end versus who were dominating the second half. The big three from Belmont didn't take over the game the way that they have taken over games in the past, and they didn't get the supporting cast that they needed to have in those games that they've had where they were unable to use their big three, right, the way that they had. Sure, and of course, uh, despite losing this game, the Rodders do get a, a little bit of uh, hardware here to take home, uh, participating in the uh, D2 North uh, final. They do, they do. They get a runners-up trophy, and uh, it's, not the, it's not the one you want, but no. Captains Mac Annis and Tyler Shapazian out there with Coach Pritchard. Uh, getting their picture taken the expression with the runners on their off trophy. Faces says it all, uh, yep, unfortunately, but uh, usually not a piece of hardware that anybody wants to hold on to for for too long. And now the winners' trophy being presented to the Beverly squad. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure here, Todd, getting to call a game with you. It has, yeah. We've been we've been talking about this uh, coming to fruition. It finally did. Glad to have the opportunity. It was fun uh, to do it. So it hopefully fun. we get a chance to do it again sometime. I mean, I, I don't get to work with a real professional so often. Oh, I'm just kidding, Coach. Right? This I, isn't I miss, even my day job. Folks. I miss you. I miss you, and I love you. I just want to yeah. just want to say that to Coach Strait. But uh, I really appreciate you. I know you you did the hockey game earlier, and then you mm -hmm. drove all the way out here. Uh, to the song is to do this game. And, yeah, can we also thank really quick uh, uh, Adam uh, the, for a few stats and Jeremy. Okay, gonna, you there. were gonna, and then, was, and then was, our I man have, Jeremy. I have my, oh, I have my full oh, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Full, I'm not, he acts like I'm a rookie at this thing. Like I haven't been crushing this for like four years. Okay. I wanted to thank you because <laughs> yeah, no you came yeah. all the way from sure. from the Wolverine game yes, to go out here. And Todd doesn't get paid. But I also want to <laughs> thank Adam who did all the production and the scoreboard but, clock as well as Jeremy Maserve, our director. Jeremy who shot the hockey game too. So he did the same thing. As well as our entire staff at BHS Sports TV. I'm Coach Jan Cuman. He's Todd Bloniars. Thanks for joining us this basketball season. We'll see you next year.